Hello everyone and welcome to Foster the Meeple. Today I'm going to be painting the Hill Troll from The Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth. My name is Zach and to get started here I'm just giving you the before shot of the troll. Here I'm doing the base skin tone of the troll. I've got a bit of mixtures here that I made up to get kind of a, a coffee-like color depending on how you take your coffee. This troll has a few different textures on it. It has a scaly, rocky bit on the shoulders, but there is a lot of just flat skin. So I'm getting all of this base color on that, and then I'll be going over with a different color to bring out the scales. This stage is about just getting the base colors on. I'm not trying to be overly neat. If I go over some areas that I don't want to be this color, that's fine. But you could also still see that uh, there's a bit of translucency with the paint still, so I will have to go over this with more than one coat. The next color I use is more brown than the beige green I started with, and I want to use lots of earthy tones for the skin of this mini because it is a hill troll, so to me that evokes greens and browns and stone colors, things like that. My main goal with this mini was to work on adding more depth and variation in the skin. So not just having shades, but also having more details. So I'm starting out flat. You can see some of the colors that I'm using here, but by the end of this, I really want to get in lots of extra details instead of just keeping to flat shades and blends. Here I'm using some dark stone on the scales. Uh, to me, I think that these would just be basically rocks sticking out of this creature. I am going to come back in later and try and add a little bit of variation in the different scales. I'm thinking different like bits of moss and things like that would have grown on this creature over time. Giving the mini a quick spin around to see how the colors work together and thinking of where to go next. And I decide to start working on the stone of the hammer. Now I'm trying to get on my different shades of gray and white here and keep them kind of wet so that I can have the lighter tones at the top, darker at the bottom, but as they're still wet I want them to sort of blend together and that'll make for a smooth transition. I wanted a lot more contrast, so I went in with an even darker color here. This is probably dark stone again. And I just want to bring that in at the very bottom because that would be the part that's the least exposed to the sunlight if we're thinking about uh, basically the sun being at the zenith, so coming from above. The loincloth is a hide, but I didn't want it to be pure leather brown, so I did mix in some desert yellow with this because I wanted it to be just a little bit lighter than that color. I'm already gonna have lots of browns and greens in the skin tones, so I wanted to bring more yellow into the loincloth here. For the shaft of the hammer, I'm using oak brown as my base coat. The loincloth had what looked like a thick reptilian hide attached to the front and back, so I went with a dark green base here. I believe I'm using angel green from my Army Painter War Paints line as the base coat. For the ropes that hold the stone onto the shaft of the hammer, I basically just used the same color that I used for the loincloth to put in a base coat. Mm -hmm. 
Here I'm mixing in a lighter green, I think it's green skin, with my original angel green, and I'm basically doing some highlights on that scaly hide. I want to keep the dark colors in the recesses of the scales, but I'm just here adding some jungle green, and I want to bring it up even more on the highlights to make it more vibrant. Next, I did a very light and watered down layer of desert yellow over some areas of the front of the skin. I'm just kind of experimenting here to see what kind of colors I get when this all dries up. And I'm trying to get, like I said, in this mini, a lot of variation in the skin. And I want it to look a bit more finely detailed in the end. So I'm trying some different things here. It is a larger mini with a big surface area, so it's good to try that on. Here you can see adding some highlights a little bit on the biceps and some of the raised areas. I'm trying to put in some more definition now, a little bit on the pectorals and abdominals of the troll. The goal here is to really give more definition to the musculature and all these raised tendons and ligaments and things like that that will hopefully pop out further along when we get through the process and after the shading and everything. I really want to have, as I said, a lot of detail going on here. For the tongue, I mixed a bit of crusted sore and red, which is basically magenta and red. I also use Crusted Sore to put in a base layer for all of the raised wounds that you can see on the hill troll. The loincloth appears to use some teeth or bones to basically stitch everything together, so here I'm just using some skeleton bone to put a base coat in for all of that. I'm using some skin tones that I already had on my wet palette and mixing them in with a bit of the crusted sore to basically color in the inside of the mouth and the gums before I do the teeth. I'm using my off-white called mummy robes to block in the teeth to begin with. Now there's a few big fangs here and basically it's gonna start out looking like kind of a blob, but later on I'm gonna come in and try and give the suggestion of actual individual teeth with a lighter white. I'm giving the mini a quick wash now, and this is either strong tone or flesh wash that I'm going over pretty much everything with. Then I use some dark tone to go over all of the stone pieces, so the hammer and the rocky scales. The washes can add some sort of basically instant definition to the mini. They get down into the recesses and dry, keep those dark, which is good. But a lot of what comes next is basically going back over everything uh, with the paints again. So here going back over I didn't get quite the same mix as I started with before so this one is a little more on the gray green side than the initial coat that I put on which had a bit more of a coffee color you can see here I'm not just putting it everywhere I'm trying to basically on some parts add in some definition with the color So here I'm painting the larger pieces of muscle, but I don't want to get the recesses. So that's basically what I'm going with now. Basically working things out as I go. Next, I wanted to bring a bit more green back into the mini. So you can see here, I'm going over kind of the same areas I just went over, uh, a little bit maybe retracted. I wanna leave a little bit of 
area with the previous color underneath and work in some transitions. But I'm basically working out now, trying to figure out how I can get a little bit of definition working out in this mini. I don't want this green to be as vibrant as it is now, so that'll be coming down a little bit as I progress. And here you can see I'm already mostly covering up that green that I did, but it's adding another layer and hopefully it adds to the overall depth of the skin that I'm working on. Here I'm working more on defining the musculature so you can see I'm really blotching in in a few of the places this lighter version of the skin tone that's already there focusing on some of the raised bits and the tops and larger muscle surfaces here i'm working on giving a little bit more definition to certain areas I did a little bit on the face there and just adding in some extra details all over this whole part of the painting is just me kind of working out and seeing how this works because this is one of the larger minis that I've painted so far uh, here you can see I'm basically stippling on different colors because this is a hill troll, spends a lot of time outside, I imagine, or in harsh conditions. It's not going to have perfect skin, so I want to add lots of blemishes and make it look like this is a creature that's been around for a while. So I'm adding in a lot of stippling of lighter and darker colors because I don't want to have just this giant smooth flat skin. Uh, I want to add basically texture without there being texture in those spots on the actual mini. Here you can see me taking a darker color and basically working in some shadows into some of the lower areas of the musculature and the mini. The loincloth has some very obvious raised edges, so at this point I'm going to do a little bit of edge highlighting on those, and I'm going to start with some more subtle colors, but I'm going to do eventually the same thing to this hide that I did to the skin. I think that it's going to be something that's old, something that's worn in, so I will be uh, basically stippling on some different colors to suggest texture on this as well. I decided that it was a bit too light, so here darkening it up a bit so that you can see here those lighter stipples will show up a bit more. I did decide to use quite a bit lighter tone here. Sometimes I don't think that I'm using enough contrast in the colors that I choose and uh, sometimes I'm afraid that it just won't transition or read well but I think that if I get more used to using high contrasting colors uh, it might end up helping me out because it should read a bit better from further away on the table. A quick look at the progress here the eyes are really recessed in this mini and it was a real pain to try and get them to be anything that I thought was good. Here I'm just doing some dry brushing on the scaly bits and I really want to start working on these to get the more variation. They're basically still just that same dark stone that they've been for the entire time. So this is picking up some lighter colors on the tops and then I'm basically working on a bit of a transition color to move between the scales and the skin.
here I'm just trying to add some imperfections into the stone so a little bit of dry brushing and a little bit of just you know speckling on these imperfections I also went in with a regular brush and added some more basic highlights and splotches and blemishes on the stone uh, I didn't want it looking flat like the whole like I said just basically with the whole mini here I'm trying to work on getting more details in there because this is a larger mini than I'm used to painting so it gives room to play with those sort of things adding a few highlights here to the shaft of the hammer basically until now it's been that base oak brown so a little bit of variety is needed there to make it more visually appealing for the ropes I'm going in and adding some lighter colors mostly trying to stay in the middle of each band of the rope and trying to keep intact some of those darker colors on the edges and bottom for the scales on the back I am going through and just trying to randomly put in some different areas and different colors on different scales so I'm going in with more dry brushing and individually painting different scales just trying to get a little bit of variety in there so it doesn't have that flat dark stone look that I started with here I'm just doing some more highlights again on a lot of those raised edges and everything at this point I could pretty much call the mini done but I do want to just keep working on it to see how much further I could take it and basically not spend too much time on it but get it to a point where I'm happy with the results and thinking that I didn't skimp out on any of the areas. More stippling and edge highlighting here for the loincloth. And here I'm coming in with basically the pure white to add in the highlights to all of those bones or teeth uh, that is basically holding the stitching of the loincloth together. For the feet, I'm basically painting on mud. So this is gonna take out some of the details that I had previously done, but I'm going to add in some different layers of mud, darker near the bottom, and I want to lighten up as it goes a bit higher, but it's just a bit to give this mini some detail like it's lived in the world. Just using matte black to quickly block in the base of the mini. Next I'm using my effect paint glistening blood and I'm at first just blotching in large blobs of the blood on the hammer and then I'm thinking well if he used this hammer like this and the blood is there where else would it be so I'm getting it uh, a lot on his knuckles of the hand that's holding the hammer. I want some specs on his other hand. He's probably uh, ripping into people at the same time he's smashing them. And then I'm using a toothbrush and using it to flick on some basically blood spray and smaller specs that I couldn't do with the brush. Here coming in with some of the jungle green it looks like and putting in some green tones into those scales. Now I've got my matte white and I'm basically blocking in, you can see, individual teeth now. I ended up a bit whiter than I wanted. I probably should have uh, kept skeleton bone for the base and maybe used the mummy robes for the highlight. Here I'm again attempting the eyes. As I said, these deeply recessed eyes I probably redid five or six times trying to get something that I 
thought I would like. Uh, so right now I just blobbed in some white and here I'm putting in some black pupils. It ended up working okay, but if I were to do it again, I might even just keep the eyes like a red or a yellow or something like that without trying to do actual eyeballs with pupils. A few final details here, just working on the fingernails and that's it. Overall, I'm pretty happy with my results here. I met my goal of basically getting more detail in the skin. I would like to work on the teeth and eyes some more if there were anything that I went back and changed. Thanks for watching everyone. We have new videos for you every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday here at Foster the Meeple, which is also our Instagram handle. If you like what you saw, please subscribe. And remember, if you're going to be shopping for board games and board gamey things, support your local game store. For us in Halifax, that's the Boardroom Game Cafe on Barrington Street.